All right, let's talk Temporal Sanctum. Let's talk LP, and let's talk making some of the coolest items that you can obtain in Last Epoch. I wanted to hold off on making this until I had a really flashy, awesome item to do, but I felt like having a perfect item with perfect rules would kind of negate the reality of what it is we're going to talk about today. I'm sure if you've been playing the game or looking at build guides or watching your favorite content creators, you've noticed that they've had these items, these unique items with this reddish purple tint. They have extra lines of text and you yourself are not really too sure how to make this item or how to get this upgrade. Me personally, I have my Morning Frost boots with movement speed. I have my Gambler's Fallacy with mana regen and I would like to add more of these mods to my items. And you're gonna say, well, I do wanna do that. How do I do that? A lot of it starts with figuring out the uniques that you want and target farming them. If you don't know how to target farm or you need help understanding target farming, leave a comment down below. I'll happily make another video talking very specifically about target farming, the percentages, understanding the math behind it and get that out to you guys. But assuming you already know how to target farm, let's move on. So for me, for example, I needed to target farm and I have been personally looking for a nice woven flesh for my build. This would be a huge upgrade to what I wanna do. It gives me the crit avoidance that I need. It gives me more crit multi because of the crit avoidance conversion, percent health overall, a nice armor for my build. The biggest problem is if you notice my current body armor versus the woven flesh, my current body armor has mana and a lot of mana and a lot of resistances. So the minute that I take my current armor off, I go from 297 mana down to 135. Same thing with my resistances. A lot of the resistances that I'm getting fixed via my armor are now gone. So that's a problem. So what we do is when we convert our character to unique items, we want to get unique items that have legendary potential. So you see it says woven flesh, body armor, unique armor, gladiator, 220 armor, legendary potential. The legendary potential number means that I can add X amount of modifiers to this armor. So in my current case here, I can add one extra modifier to my armor. What this means is that I will go run Temporal Sanctum, I will take a piece of gear, I will combine them together, and one of my mods will move on to the armor. So I'm going to demonstrate and show you that today. So what I have is I have another armor that I can use and ideally, I would like to add flat base mana to my woven flesh. So I got an armor, it has to be exalted. So it has to have a tier six or better mod. And then it has to have four other mods. So I crafted my armor, I made a nice armor. If you don't know how to do crafting, I actually have a video on the YouTube that you guys can go check out about how to get into the basics of crafting. I made something nice that really just kind of suits my needs. So ideally we'll go run the dungeon now. I combine the two items together and hopefully flat mana or percent mana moves over. When you take an item to smash it into an item, you want to make sure that as many of the mods that are on there, like if it's not your ideal mod, the other mods moving over are okay. I would accept percent mana. I would not really be happy with necrotic resistance and I would not be happy with percent health. I really prefer the mana, but because a lot of my builds or future builds are going to use Wolven Flesh, I made sure that if I move over a bad mod that is a mod that I don't want, I have something that is usable. So we'll go over that again when we get to the end of the dungeon. So we have a Temporal Sanctum key. We right click it. It opens up our map. It shows us where Temporal Sanctum is. If you don't have the waypoint to the dungeon, then you have to go to the closest waypoint and run to the dungeon, unfortunately. That is the unfortunate side of things. We'll load in. And then we'll go to the door. And here's where things get interesting. We take our key, we put it in. We enter the Sanctum. Now, the unique body armor in the bottom right says required level 51. So you want to select a difficulty of the dungeon equal to um, that in which you need. So if I need to do an item that's 51, the level 55 dungeon will not be enough. As you see on the left side of the screen, it says at tier one, the entity's cash can accept unique items with a level requirement of 50 and below. This is 51. T 
tier two dungeon says at tier two the entity cash can accept you need items with a requirement level of 65 and below so for my woven flesh i'd have to do at least tier two tier three for eye level 75 and i currently have not unlocked tier four yet on this character i have not had a need for tier four yet but eventually i will probably want to slam in some big ticket item i don't know what that ticket item is yet um and i'll need to upgrade tier four but we're just not there yet so i'm gonna click tier two because that's what i need i'm gonna enter the dungeon and i'm gonna walk you guys through the dungeon and the process of the dungeon so that you know what's going on this dungeon is actually really cool and really interesting it allows us an extra ability this temporal shift which is right here on my d key and i can actually travel through time so i found the entrance to the dungeon by traveling through time and as i go through the dungeon the dungeon is going to be a typical maze and you see here there are bars there and if i check there's still bars in the back end of time so you go back and forth in time to attempt to find the exit to the next zone dungeons in the last epoch are really interesting they're pretty much just big mazes with a lot of mobs that you have to navigate my rule of thumb is to always check top right or top left you know just pretty much go to a corner and run the corner eventually just like any maze as long as you keep your hand or your character on one side of the wall and follow it through you'll eventually find an exit and this goes the same for soul fire bastion and lightless arbor i think it's called lightless arbor i'm pretty sure it's called lightless arbor if you guys want to know more about those dungeons by the way and how those dungeons work and interact and the basis behind it please by all means leave a comment down below now you see this character that i'm playing right here is an exploding ballistas character i actually have a lot of fun with this character it's probably been my favorite character next to my paladins of the league and i'm i really enjoy it so you see in the mini map it shows us the door is right here and i obviously can't go through the door i time shift and then the door will open every time that you go to a new section of the dungeon the dungeon will get new modifiers so as you just saw here we're gonna have more health and more damage on the monsters but because it's a lower tier level it's only tier two we really don't have too too much to worry about the only thing in this dungeon that you're gonna have to worry about is pretty much the one shot mechanics from the boss but when we get to the boss in a couple of minutes we'll talk about the boss how it works what's going on so we come into this room we notice yes. there's no door nowhere to go we shift through time again and we get to see the door that's locked there's nothing we can do we come back through time I, I don't know, man. I kind of, I really like the, the, I, I want to say like ingenuity, I think is the word that I'm looking for. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but like these, these dungeons themselves are just, they're so well thought out and well designed. I mean, all right, the maze part gets a little annoying here and there for sure. Right. But like the idea of like my character has to jump through time for doors that are open or not open to find the boss. That's pretty cool. I think it's a very different concept. I I don't think I've ever seen anything in a game like this, like ever. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if like WoW or something does like a similar concept, but I think it's really cool. All right, let's see. Where is the exit? I want to get to the exit. This is the second floor of the dungeon. All the dungeons have two floors. So as soon as we find the exit here, we'll be able to go talk about the boss and fight the boss and then show you guys exactly how this works. We're going to go over here. That's locked. We can't go that way. We'll come up this way. What? Homie, we're not going to you for anything. We're literally here to use you to use the cash. Is that not the door? Where the heck is the door? This is some of the reality of what's going to happen when you do this. Sometimes these dungeons, especially if you have a slower moving character like mine, just pretty much take an extra minute to just get through. I do think there's a world where you play this game and you have characters that are designed to do certain tasks, but that might be too sweaty. So you see now we made it to the door the boss dungeon will drop additional runes additional health additional all that jazz we go into the boss room and we get ready loading screen <laughs> all right so we're in the boss room we see the door right there there's a chest here that you can click on you might get something really cool you can travel through time there'll be another chest here you get to click on and see if you get any loot we go through time again and we're going to go into the boss room now this boss has a couple of phases and a couple of things that are going on i'm going to try to attempt to talk through it without instantly killing it if i die and there's a cut because i died and was talking about things don't yell at me 
when you come into the boss room you'll have to fight the boss through time and you see right away i start dealing a bunch of damage when she does this you have to blink through time if you don't blink through time the boss will instantly kill you when you come through time she's going to put that puddle underneath you you will move that puddle to the corner of the room where you don't have to worry about it now while you're fighting maven because i'm pretty sure this is where maven's idea was coming from and you fight the chronomancer she will do this spinning ball attack thing you can pretty much just you know move and not get hit she'll do that phase blowy uppy thingy again you come through time again you drag this to the corner you place the puddle you don't have to worry she does the spinning ball phase again tldr don't get hit by the spinning balls tldr place the puddles in the corner of the room when the boss is dead and you get some loot and you take a look at what's going on you come into the next room this is where we'll slam our item together so essentially we'll come here you'll see that the ancient power is already done it's already been completed in time we can't use this we go backwards in time and we take our item and we place our unique item here our exalted item here we have to make sure it has four affixes and then we'll seal the cash tldr keep in mind one lp or one legendary potential item will only receive one of these four mods on this we are hoping for flat mana the more lp that you have on an item the more chances that you get at getting the mods that you want so if i had a two lp item i would hope for the both percent manas to work over or at least flat it would give me a better odds of getting what i want because it had two same thing with three same thing with four a four lp item will just move over all the prefixes and all the suffixes without worry four lps are really hard to find so we seal it it's unusable now we go through time we click on it we cross our fingers we look at it and we hope for mm, dang it percent health is still really good though <laughs> percent health is still really good though but dang did i want mana oh i gotta go farm another one now and just like that the cycle of last epoch continues where now i'm gonna go kill a bomb again for the 400th time and try to get another one <laughs> Dude, it's not even bad. It's still really good. Like, if I just, like, put it on, it's, like, another 100 health. But I lose so much mana. I need the flat mana too much. But it's it's a beautiful armor. Absolutely stunning. For now, friends, I wanted to share this with you and kind of just kind of walk you through what's going on here. But, you know, for me, I'm, I'm off to go farm another armor and maybe get lucky. We'll see, though. If you found this video useful and helpful and <laughs> you want more videos or more guides like this in the future... Please don't hesitate to leave a like, comment, stop by the Discord. The Discord is insanely active. You can post about your build, come talk about your build, and come ask questions. I really, really, really encourage you guys, if you guys use the Discord or you guys want to come by the stream, the Discord in general, I know I'm going to take a minute to like pimp my own Discord and just let you guys know the Discord is very active. We constantly share videos and information to help you guys. We talk about build showcases, different kinds of items. And if you play other games like Path of Exile, we have an insanely active Path of Exile community. And I really encourage you guys to come on over and come stop by. If anything, you might be able to find some people to play the game with and have a good time with. But on that note, chat and friends and YouTube and everybody listening, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one.